myself, Dr. Girish Gupta, endoscopic spine surgeon from Jaipur, Rajasthan, and uh, I am a faculty of Mission Spine Foundation. Today, I am going to show a case of the upmigrated disc herniation. Generally, the upmigrated disc herniation is very uh, not so common, like the downmigrated disc herniation. And uh, mostly, the upmigrated disc herniation, if occurred, it topographically, if the uh, disc herniation is the foraminal or the extraforaminal disc herniation. But this case who presented with the uh, right lower limb, severe right lower limb radiculopathy and some, uh, somehow he managed to walk with the left sciatic list and the patient on examination he had bilateral EHL 4Y5 and uh, other neurology was normal and patient direct jumping of the any MRI or the investigation I would like to share a concept of the three zone and the three wall and according to this concept that all pathologies or the all pain generators that occurred surrounding the spinal canal occurred in only and only in the three zones and uh, 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 regarding this uh, general concept you can see uh, our other video you can watch other video and uh, briefly I am describing it here that upper zone is extended from the lower border of the upper pedicle to the lower end plate of the upper vertebra and the middle zone is the discal zone between the two end plates and the lower zone extended from the upper end plate of the lower vertebra to the mid pedicular line of the lower vertebra beyond that this is the buffer zone from the mid pedicular to the lower border of the lower pedicle so the all pathologies or the all pain generator pain generators occurs in the only the in three zones so if we learn to read the MRI according to zone wise, then it is very precise planning and the precise and we can do the surgery very precisely and we can target only on the pathological tissues or the patholo main pain generators. So in this uh, sagittal cuts, you can see that as going from right to left side here in the right foramen, you can see there is a little bit compression over the exiting nerve root due to the disc, uh, disc bulge and further if you will move towards the from right to canal side then you can see there is some uh, tissue that is going to be hard uh, and it may be due to the it is uh, probably the g naught at the superior articular process and here at the yellow triangle you can see some osteophytes from the l4 vertebra and if we move towards the more uh, towards the canal side then we can see that the may some fragment which is going from the middle zone to the upper zone and here in the uh, center of the canal you can see that the large major fragment that is going from the middle zone to the upper zone and the fragment was so big that he, it has lifted the PLL totally. So if we move towards from the canal to lateral side, left side then again we can see that there is something happening at the tip of the ACP that is again uh, G naught while the foramen of the left side it is uh, exiting root is totally and completely free. So if you will see over the axial cuts in this patient, then you can see this is the cut from the upper zone. This is from the upper middle zone. This is from the lower middle zone and that this is from the lower zone. So upper zone, you can see that there is a fragment that is coming from the left side and going towards the right side. And the upper middle zone, you can see there is a, another uh, major two fragment that is coming from the left side and going towards the right side. And there is something happening here over the ligamentum flame and I think this is the ligamentum flame hypertrophy and in the lower middle zone you can see again the fragment is going uh, from the left side towards the right side and compressing the thecal sac or the traversing nerve root while in the lower zone you can see that the lateral recess is near about the totally free except the hard polygenous tissue in the left lateral recess so this is the way to read the MRI by the zone wise so we can uh, precisely plan our surgery with the transferomal techniques and we can deal the all pathological tissue with the transferomal techniques. So if we will do, uh, we started this surgery, then after putting the needle and the guide wire after the markings, uh, it is my routine practice that when my cannula just touched to the posterior annulus in the lateral view, generally I removed the guide wire so I can tap my cannula in my desired direction. So after putting the cannula in the working channel, then uh, then uh, entered with the endoscope and you can see we landed in the middle zone so we are removing the all fragments from the middle zone and there are a lot of instruments available and a lot of graspers available of the different uh, diameters as well as the different uh, uh, jaws that we can uh, with the help of those we can take out the fragments so here we are doing the 
job in the middle zone and after removing the all fragments from the middle zone and many times the annular cutter uh, helps to hold the hard fragment it is not only for the annular, annular cutting but it can be used as a holding of the hard fragments so i removed the fragments then i ablate and to clear our vision we can shrink the tissue with the plasma probe and here you can see that the epidural space this is the epidural space at the 12 o'clock and we are doing our work intradiscal in the middle zone here you can see this is the end plate so uh, it is uh, by mistakenly i didn't tell you that uh, this is the cranial side of the patient and this is the caudal side of the patient means nine o'clock is the cranial and three o'clock is the caudal because this patient uh, has the main fragment from right left to right side so we decided to operate this surgery from the left side so here you can see that we are using the flexual annular cutter and we have cut it down the annulus and after cutting the annulus, you can see that there is a fragment that are, we are trying to tease out from the upper zone and we have removed from the upper zone and right now we are moving towards the middle zone and then the lower middle zone. So this was a big, big fragment that was going from the lower middle zone to the upper zone. So we have teased out with the help of the hook and take it out and with the graspers. Then after removing the, this big fragment, then again, we had an epidural space in under vision and you can see there is another fragment that is going from the middle zone to the upper zone. But I rotated my cannula towards the lower middle zone because I needed to create some room or the, some space to pull out that particular fragment from upper zone to the anterior, disc, uh, anterior side. So I removed the all fragments from the lower middle zone and after the uh, all fragments from the lower middle zone, the thickal sac completely decompressed. So here we are removing the fragments and after removing the fragment, I generally use the plasma pro plasma to ablate and the shrink to tissue to decrease the post-operative low back pain. So here you can appreciate that this is the end plate of the upper vertebra and this is the end plate of the lower vertebra. Now again, we are teaching the fragment from the started from the middle zone and going gradually, gradually towards the upper zone. So here uh, I am trying to pull out the tail of the fragment because most of time the fragments remains like the ice work so it's a small part remains the in canal while the main part means the tails remains the interdiscal so we are trying to take out the fragment with the pulling of the tail of the fragment so this is the basically tail of the fragment and uh, these are the flexible graspers they are very helpful to take out the fragments from the hidden zone that are not uh, under the vision of the scope so like this it was also a good uh, and the major fragment and after the decompressing, then you can see that the how pretty epidural space and this is the hard annulus that we are cutting with the annular cutter. And we should be kept ready of uh, RF or the plasma that when we cut the annulus, uh, there may be some lot of bleeding due to the decompression of the epidural vessels. So get the good hemostasis and then you can visualize the all things. So right now you can see that we have decompressed completely the middle zone. Right now we are working towards the upper zone because beyond this uh, end plate there is the upper zone and uh, I am trying to tease out the fragments from the upper zone with the help of the hook. Again, I am cutting the hard annulus with the annular cutter and believe me, it was so hard that uh, my annular cutter was failed to cut it. So gradually, very gradually, we uh, tease out, we pulled out and uh, finally we cut out with the rigid, uh, with the help of the rigid uh, annular cutter with the flexible annular cutter. So finally, we cut it down up to the center of the canal. Almost beyond the center of canal means towards the right side as well. So here is the fragment and um, this is the upper zone again. And I am trying to pull out the fragment with the help of the uh, flexible grasper. You can see it and appreciate it well. So now you can see that the epidural space is pulsating uh, very well. So again, I am working towards the axilla of the left side and trying to tease out the hard annulus. And you can appreciate that my cannula, my hook tip is going how much comfortably inside into the upper zone. So after teasing it out, again, I ablate it and pulled out. So after completing of the completion of the decompression of from the upper zone to the middle zone, you can see and uh, you can appreciate it well that from this end plate to this end plate, we have totally decompressed. And it is our routine practice to put the hook in the zone wise and take an x-ray that where we are. And it is also our routine practice in finally 
be avulate the tissue and shrink the tissue to reduce the post operative low back pain so like this we have completely decompressed and uh, it is our routine practice to put a derwent plug or the prps after finishing our surgery to get the early healing of the annulus so in this x rays you can see that intraoperatively where we were so our hooked uh, direction is towards the uh, upper zone and you can see that it is uh, near about the upper uh, totally upper zone and uh, in this view you can see that we were touching the inferior end plate superior end plate of the lower vertebra so we have totally decompressed from the upper zone to the uh, middle zone because there was no pathology on the lower zone so there was no need to go in the lower zone like this if we are able to uh, learn to mri according to the uh, concept of the zone wise then we can deal the all pathologies very precisely and there is no need to go extra beyond the uh, pathologies so like this you can uh, see that we have decompressed totally from upper zone to the middle zone and here you can see that uh, uh, how we prepare the derwent plug you can watch the other videos that how we how we prepare the derwent plug and uh, how it used to heal the annulus, how it helps to healing the annulus so it is our routine practice to put a derwent plug and uh, just after 30 minutes of surgery you can see the work of the patient and you can compare as well as appreciate our work that uh, just before surgery how the patient was walking and just after 30 minutes of surgery how patient was walking so this is the beauty of this surgery that uh, this is very uh, precise surgery very very precise surgery there is no need to cut any anatomical tissues or the, any uh, normal anatomical structures so uh, transformational techniques with transformational techniques we can deal the all things and uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, uh, you can also enjoy the other videos uh, uh, that is available on the site thank you so much